Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher. Welcome to Sweetwater Soundcheck. This time out, we have a special guest and some great new products for you to check out. This is Matt Redman, Director of Product Marketing for Mackey. Great Hi. to have you here, buddy. Thanks, man. Good nice to see you again. Great to be here. For Thanks sure. for coming in. You bet. So we've got some cool stuff to check out. This is a new flagship line of uh, loudspeakers for Mackey. That's correct. I mean, we're really excited, particularly because the original 450 came out 20 years ago that wow. Mackey's produced. We're celebrating our 30th anniversary this year, so to have a new flagship speaker uh, to herald that is really great. All right, very cool. Well, congratulations on the uh, on the anniversary. I've been there through the whole the whole run. So many great products and things, yeah. and and of course, this is just adding to the whole lineage of excellent things that Mackey's produced. For sure. I mean, just capitalizing on the design expertise and engineering expertise that we've had over the last couple decades as technology moves forward it's really late it's really awesome for us to be able to put the latest and greatest in these new products All right well let's check them out sure. so this is the drm series and we've got everything here from what a 115 112 215 yep 212 a 215 a 315 with a six and a half inch mid-range driver mm -hmm. There's also the 12 inch array with three one inch tweeters in it and an 18 inch subwoofer. So obviously uh, the sort of product line that's perfect for churches, uh, clubs, theaters, amphitheaters, bands. I mean, a wide range of customers that we would go after with this type of professional product. So the DRM series that we're looking at then with the five models, they all have integrated amplifiers as well as DSP and electronics? That's correct. They're powered amplifiers ranging from 1600 watts peak to 2300 watts peak mm -hmm. in the lineup. And then there's all sorts of onboard DSP, the stuff you can't touch that handles all the cooling and the, and the interface itself, which we can walk through here. Right, right. Now you were out uh, a couple months ago, right, and showed us some, uh, some prototypes and we got to hear these, these speakers in action. And you were talking about what really goes into developing a line of speakers like this and the amount of listening you do and the amount of comparisons of things. Take us through that process a little bit. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's so many great competitors out in the field and it's such a challenging game uh, to really try and outdo one another as we all sort of vie for the same customer. And so the, the big challenge there is, is you know, you want to have your own voice, but you also want to make sure that, that your product uh, is, is competitively favorable. So one advantage that everybody has, I think, as a loudspeaker manufacturer when there are products in market is that you have the opportunity to listen how you size up against them, and that gives every manufacturer an opportunity to be the new best thing when their product comes <laughs> right, out, right? Right. <laughs> right. Well, I know you have a ton of experience in live sound, and so you're, you're doing a lot of the voicing yourself, right? You're kind of the final sign-off on this? Yeah, final sign-off, but we do have an acoustics department, of course, too, and, so, and we do like to collaborate with lots of good ears in the building, and mm -hmm. so it's a really uh, iterative, a collaborative process that, that we hope lands in a place where not only do all of us like it, but all of you like it too. Sure, sure. So take us through the, the models in the line and where each one excels and what kind of features you're looking at in these. Well, let me summarize all three of the point source boxes sort of in terms of the interface and the voicing going on because uh, while a, while a three-way is a little bit different, the interface on all the point sources is the same and the under-the-hood technologies are more or less the same. So okay. uh, particularly for power uh, and voicing, uh, our power platform has built-in universal power supply so you can use them anywhere in the world, which is fantastic. That's becoming more and more of a standard. Right built-in power factor correction as well. So if you have suboptimal power, dirty power, not a proper voltage, it's sort of like ha having a mini uh, you know, power correction right inside the unit, like a Furman or something like that. Mm -hmm. So you avoid that sort of risk, and, and what that adds is reliability just right up front before you even get into the sound component of it. Right. And then again, 1600 watts peak for these guys in the wood box category, currently leading uh, with our peak specs. Um, and then the three-way is the one that goes all the way up to 2300 watts because you've got three different drivers to power a 15 inch low, uh, six and a half inch mid-range, and then all of the compression drivers across the line are 1.4 inch titanium. Okay. So now when you get into the power and the interplay of how they work with the boxes, they are high power, so the SPL is on par with, in, with what you'd expect, but the real magic happens uh, with what we call advanced impulse DSP. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you know, as we continue to move forward in technologies, there's uh, products without FIR filtering, there's products with FIR filtering, and then there's advanced impulse DSP. And so what FIR filtering is at its core is it just attempts to get rid of the anomalies that speakers themselves contribute to the sound, right? Like, mm -hmm. like flavored water. You could have a horn sounds like this and does that to your sound unless you correct for that. Okay. And so that's becoming more and more of a standard with uh, 
uh, com our competitors doing on-axis measurement and corrections for those things. What you're able to do is effectively by measuring and correcting for the anomaly that the speaker contributes, you sort of you know remove it from the from contributing negatively to your sound. Right. The benefit that that advanced impulse DSP offers is that we correct for that not only in the entire frequency range and the entire time domain, but also in the entire space domain as well. Not only on axis, but everywhere in the room. So, helps uh, mitigate problems like. Uh, lobing and comb filtering and those sorts of unwanted buildups that you would have and so uh, right now nobody else is doing that level of correction again across the entire level of dispersion and that's really what sets these part acoustically from the other players. Right, right, amazing amount of technology. So traditionally Mackey has put that technology behind the scenes so they're very easy to operate. Is that also the case with these speakers? So yeah, there's a bit of both. The, the Advanced Impulse DSP I mentioned is sort of a under the hood, behind the scenes thing. It's, it's math that we do because we know what our speaker is going to contribute to the sound and so we can specifically correct for our portion of the signal chain. Mm -hmm. It's everything after that when you get into what we call the DRM control dashboard where the user can control additional stuff on top of that from uh, voicings specific to the venues, live voicings, club voicings. Uh, you can actually wedge down the 215 and the 212, and so we've got a monitor voicing. You can fly the 315 horizontally, rotate the horn. So, you know, we've got a lot of different uh, setups for that. Of course, the subwoofer, fully variable crossover in all the top boxes and the bottom boxes uh, that the user can access. Right. So we can kind of go through some of that stuff uh, in a little more detail, but the point is the user can tailor their sound further to their liking beyond what we've done to it. Right. Well, let's take a look at, uh, at like I say, a little more detailed look at what's going on there. Sure. Let's talk about the DRM control dashboard, starting quickly with the I.O. panel here. As you can see, we've got two combo inputs uh, that accept TS, TRS, and XLR. Direct outs for both of those in case you need a premix signal. There's also a third input for 3.5 mil or eighth inch inputs for a phone or a similar device. And then a mix out for the overall post uh, mix of the device that needs to go to another unit uh, down the way. So really flexible I.O. Now diving further into the DRM control dashboard, you think of this like an onboard system processor. So instead of having lots of racks of gear, you've got all the stuff you need right inside the unit. To that point, right at the outset, and you look at the, the dashboard view, you've got full color, high resolution screen with high resolution metering of inputs one, two, and three, as well as your output level. So you can come to the back of the unit and see, am I clipping? What modes do I have it in? All the, all the core elements that you would need to be able to see in a readout. You can also have the screen turn uh, dim, you can have it turn off, but if you want it on and you like the control dashboard standpoint, that's all sitting here for you to, to read. In addition to that, right down the middle, you can see what voicing mode you're in, whether or not I have a high pass or low pass engaged, depending upon the box. Am I adding any additional user EQ, low, mid, and high parametric EQ on board on top of the voicing modes, and then the alignment delay. So again, all the critical stuff you'd need to see now if I go into the unit, uh, into the settings, you can see that I can address all of those different things in the form of starting with the mode. Here's my voicing mode where I have live, club, speech, or monitor, and the voicing modes vary per unit. Subwoofer, I either have no subwoofer, I have a DRM subwoofer, or I have a fully variable crossover that I can set myself within the unit down to the hertz. There's user EQ. Again, you've got three band, low, mid, and high. So the low and highs are shelving EQs, and the mid is a bell, and you can parametric, and you can grab whichever frequency uh, down to the kilohertz that you want to grab and uh, make an adjustment there. Alignment delay. This is another extremely handy one. So you've got um, a calculator built into the unit for you. So instead of having to calculate for how many milliseconds of alignment delay you need, you've got uh, feet and meters here in addition to milliseconds of delay. So depending upon how far you uh, place the units apart for each other for delay stacks, you can ensure both in feet and in milliseconds that your delay is properly set. Additional configurations too, there's actually six onboard save and recalls. So if you have different save and recalls that you use, uh, different venues that you use the unit in, you can do save and recall for those. 
There's a lock pin. If you don't want other people to use the unit, you can set up a four-digit lock pin so they can't access it. Uh, and a couple other settings. Again, if you want the backlight to be on or dim or off. If you want to turn the front LED off, for example, you can do that here. And there's factory reset as well. There's also an about where you can actually go in and see um, what temperature the unit's running at, which is something I didn't mention earlier, is that we've got onboard DSP that controls the cooling, uh, but there's one other factor too that the units have, which is that the ports are firing at the amplifier itself. So the more you turn up the volume, the more air is pointed at the amplifiers, and so there's physics-based cooling on top of all the DSP smarts that are in the unit too. So, super cool. I mean, that's amazing, the amount of control. That, that you have there. I mean, you really can dig in and, and customize the speaker for the venue that you're playing in. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. We don't want to assume that we know more than the user or that, you know, we want to give them control in that room. Sure. Well, every situation is different. Totally. So you, you want to make sure you can handle that. Absolutely. So that's a tour of the, uh, the point source, but there's also arrays in the lineup. Tell us about those. That's correct. Now, it's just one box. It's a 12-inch uh, two-way array with three one-inch uh, titanium compression drivers in it. Uh, through a slotted waveguide on one side. So constant curvature array, it's a 20 by 110 dispersion. So every box that you add uh, gives you, of course, another 20 degrees of vertical coverage. Now, the array also has a little bit different um, user-facing uh, options that you can control uh, than the point source boxes, specifically array voicing modes. You're going to go behind the unit and tell it how many boxes you have. I have one array, I have two arrays, I have three, I have four. And because every box that you add, you'll get some unwanted low frequency summation, we've done some of the math for you to sort of fix that problem, so take that anomaly out of the mix. Arrays are becoming much more common. We're seeing, seeing them in different types of venues. Where would someone use an array like this? I think uh, theaters of 300 or less, whether it's a theater, house of worship, et cetera. Um, another important factor of all these boxes, they have delay built into them. So if you have a larger venue or, or, or you're outside, uh, in a you know block party or amphitheater environment, you can build delay stacks into it too. So you sure. can serve a much larger audience. But I would say anywhere from two arrays for a small coffee house up to four for a giant theater. Mm -hmm. So this is the type of system that you could take into a smaller. We're on a pole here with the uh, the subwoofer, but you could also fly these in a in a bigger room. And there's lots of uh, possibilities. Yeah, the the various configurations are kind of all over the place. You can. You can put just one unit on a pole if you want to, if you've got a really simple setup, you know. So mm -hmm. if you've got uh, six or eight boxes and you want a scalable system, it's perfect for that because you can do one or two boxes there on a tripod, on a sub if you need the extra subwoofer. There's flown. You can fly up to four boxes, of course, on our uh, separately sold fly bar. Um, you can also fly subwoofers as well, up to two subwoofers and four arrays per side with our separately sold flyware kit. So you can get a pretty big uh, system when you go that way. Right. The, the final sort of configuration to touch on is sub stacking or ground stacking is that you can stack up to three boxes on top of a subwoofer or if you have a fly bar on the ground up to three or four boxes on that fly bar as well for an up-firing amphitheater configuration. So extremely versatile boxes for yeah. a wide variety of use cases. So you mentioned the subwoofer several times. Tell us what's happening there. What's, uh, what's going on on the bottom end with the system? Yeah, it's a 2,000 watt peak subwoofer. It's got all the I.O. you would expect, so stereo, XLR inputs, full range out and high pass out. Now instead of all the various voicing modes, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit simpler of a beast because you basically have control over your high pass or low pass to the box itself and, and as well as control over what's coming out of the highs. Um, cardioid modes as well, so front firing and rear firing, depending on the setup that you have, you're able to turn the boxes around and, and focus the low frequencies in the direction that you want it to go instead of just sort of everywhere as low frequencies tend to do. So right. having a cardioid option sets this box apart as well from some of the competitors in the space. Right. And does the same subwoofer match with the point source cabinets? That's correct. Um, if you just pull them out of the box and set them all to unity, it doesn't matter which box you've got, whether it's a 12-inch 2A15 or, or the array, they're all just sort of ready to go. We've actually done a little bit of pre-voicing for those that want a super quick setup. You can select 
uh, tell the, the uh, interface there, the DRM control dashboard, that you have a DRM subwoofer on your top. Tell the bottom box that you have a DRM top on the top. It'll set your, your crossover for you so you don't have to do it yourself. Nice. Again, though, if you, if you have more time and you want to, everything's fully variable and you can customize it further from there. Sure. So you either just set it up and go or you can, you can dig in and really optimize everything for what's yeah, happening. For sure. Now, with the three different size of point source cabinets and the subwoofer, tell us a little bit about where you might use, what, what the applications are for these cabinets. Yeah, no, I, I think of the 12-inch the and the 15-inch and the two-ways as sort of your, your every man's box. I mean, that, that again, could be a, a small club or cafe, a smaller venue, or a band. Again, they double as monitors, and they have a monitor voicing mode built in. So you could actually build a full system inclusive of front of house uh, and monitors and side fills and front fills and everything if you wanted to with the, the 212 and 215. Mm -hmm. When you start to get into a bigger venue and you want a little bit more performance and, and overall volume, low, low frequency output, that's where I would move up to the 315 for a couple different reasons. One of them is that just having a six and a half inch woofer in the middle, that's really the driver that handles your, your vocals and your mid-range content the best. And so having your amplifiers dedicated to uh, handling less frequency range per amplifier and per driver gives you overall greater clarity right. and loudness, right? Because each amplifier is running more efficiently, delivering to a smaller amount of, of frequency range. So right. you really get uh, extended low frequencies as you move up the line in general. And then the 315, that vocal clarity, mid-range clarity really shines through as well. With the 315, you wouldn't use it in a wedge configuration, but you would use it, you know, flown either vertically or horizontally. You just pop these screws off, there's a rotatable horn right inside. And so since it's a little bit tall, you might want it to, to be a little bit more tucked away in the theater. So right. that's kind of there. And then also speech voicing mode is, is one of the others just built into these things. So if you have an entry level user who doesn't necessarily need to want to do a lot of EQ, you can just dial that up and again to that set it and forget it point, we, we kind of address a range of users um, from entry level point and shoot, you know, set up like just a pop up sort of a event versus everything to a full blown uh, install where the, the uh, main front of house guy wants to control everything, you know. Right. You can do that too. Right, right. Actually, I was just thinking that uh, I know several vocalists who would love to have that for a. Oh, right. <laughs> the, yep. Yeah. That's one. Never, never enough vocals in the mix, right? That's one of my favorite boxes. <laughs> that and the array, I think, right. are, are special boxes. Right. Well, one of the things that uh, was apparent to me when we were listening to these is the consistency of the sound. You mentioned that the bottom end uh, goes deeper as you get to the larger cabinets, mm -hmm. but across the top and across the mid range, they're very consistent as you go through the line. You're just kind of stepping up. Yeah, that's by design. You know, that, that touches on another interesting point, too, is that a lot of the other available options out there, um, you can buy point source boxes that are in one particular family and an array that's in another particular family. We're one of the few manufacturers that wanted to provide a holistic sound system that included all of those components with consistent sound across all of those components. So you get what you would expect. Am I in a venue where I need more bass? Great, I'm, I'm going to add one of my 15s into the mix. Or you know, being able to mix and match your arrays with your monitors and everything sort of got the same acoustic flavor to it and all the benefits we talked about earlier with the uh, Advanced Impulse DSP cleaning up the unwanted stuff in the mix. And so as a family, it's really sort of different and special in that way as well. Yeah, right, right. It's great to have that consistency. You really know what to expect yeah. out of each cabinet as you're, yeah. as you're using it. That's awesome. Yeah. Matt, thanks so much for coming in. It's really been a treat to get to check out the new flagship line from Mackie. The DRM series just sounds incredible. Yeah. I like the size of the cabinets. They're lightweight, tons of power, nice, round, rich, warm sound. Done a great job. Well, I'm glad you think so, too. Yeah, thanks so much for having us. Great to see you. Yeah. And thank you for joining me for Sweetwater Soundcheck. I'm Mitch Gallagher.